So in the last seedling video I did, I said um, you might not see a whole lot of top growth on these seedlings, um, but you will see a lot of roots. So that's what we have here. It is mid-October, so a lot of this top growth has died back, but as you can see from what you're looking at here, the roots look still pretty great. So I'm going to be planting out a bunch of these. The seedlings aren't going to be much to look at for the most part, but hope you enjoy it anyway. We are down here at the Hell Strip. Um, I have started to weed my cactus a little bit, uh, but I've got a couple of things to plant in here this morning. These are the two showy wild garlic plants that sprouted and lived. Uh, we have Verbena simplex back there. And I've got two containers of this is purple milkweed so common milkweed but purple uh, as you can tell the tops have definitely died back uh, but i'm assuming the roots are still good we'll see when i get them out so that's what we're doing this morning roots seem fine it'll probably do okay in the ground over winter we'll see of course, uh, I popped this out of its can, but it uh, <laughs> I don't have the hole dug yet, so. All right. All right, not that you can see them really because they didn't have any top growth anymore, but I've planted the two purple milkweeds, one right there. This is the grass leaf goldenrod. This is the smooth, Aster. This is the last little bloom on there. Uh, New York, uh, uh, New England Aster. And then right in there, I've planted the other purple milkweed. This is the uh, steeple bush. We'll see how they do. Uh, I've got two more for down here. Let's get those in. Okay, there's my two tiny showy wild garlic sprouts. There's one of the three there being a simplex. Okay, so showy wild garlic for being a simplex. more simplex and one more simplex right at the top of the cactus all right i have more purple joe pie weed which is ready to be in the ground <laughs> beyond ready uh, and i've got some world milkweed not that you can tell because again it's only stems uh, but I'm betting the roots are fine. So we're gonna put those in down here at sort of the front tip. And there are its roots. Not much to look like, mm, not much to look at above, but still has nice roots. It is fall after all, so other milkweed, you know, clearly stuff has died back, except for the pods, so. We'll see. All right, not that you can really see them, but there they are. One here and one there. Those are the world milkweed. Okay, I have flat-topped aster, great St. John's wort, and spotted joe pie, joe pie maculatum or whatever it is, mac, joe pie mac. Hmm. Um, this is in, we are in the new shade garden. There's me. Hi. Okay, let's get these in. Okay, here's where I am. Ooh, wind. Not that you can see it, but that is the great St. John's wort. Have the flat top aster and 
spotted Joe Pie. Oh, yeah. And his, all of the root systems look good on these, even though the top growth has died back. And right over here, I think that is some um, hyssop that I planted earlier this year. So there we go. Down here. Another spot for plants that don't have any top growth but had decent roots. I put prairie lilies down here. This is one of the peaches. And I put another one up here by the other peaches. Little prairie lily. Not that you can see them. They are just, the top is dirt with roots underneath. Anyway, got more to do. A little bit more golden Alexander next to my other golden Alexander. Right back here, off the back of the door, and the faucet. Should be nice in the spring. Okay, I have one poke milkweed I'm going to put back here between the red bud and the dogwood. This is off the back of the woods. Top growth has died down, but the roots still look good. I talked about and checked earlier, so it's going to go right there. Already blending into its surroundings. <laughs> this is white turtle head. Um, something glabria. Glab, gla, um, anyway, white turtle head. I'll put the name on the screen. Um, I'm going to put it right in here along my driveway wall under the knockout rows. Uh, the top growth has died back, but um, it does have really nice roots. I'll show you those. There are the roots. So I'm just going to dig a hole right in here, and that's where it'll go. All right, not that you can see it, but that's where I put it. <laughs> uh, just to give you an idea of where we are. We have a tiny lion's foot over there. I got another container with like one or two. Again, pretty decent roots in it, even if a lot of the top growth has died back. It's gonna go in the wooded garden. I'll show you where. Here's that one little leaf here. And one on the other side amongst the ferns. So that's a lion's foot. Tall thimbleweed. A little bit of top growth in there. I've got two of these. I'll put them in the ground and show you where. Okay, right there. And right over there. thimbleweed. Nodding onion is up next. I'm going to put some over here by that rock and some here by that rock. I'll show you what they look like. They look like little onion sprouts. Let's get them in. How will I know the difference? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just have marked where they are. There and there. And there. Nodding onion. Prairie onion. I've got one here. And I have one over there. I might as well show you what the rest of these are. Uh, I have uh, goat's rue here and in there. I'm gonna have to do some cleaning up of this area first. And I have a regular thimbleweed here and here. And that's the other prairie onion. Prairie onion. That's where it is. 
I'll zoom you out right in there. Okay. Haven't done the goat's root yet. One tiny thimbleweed. One even tinier <laughs> thimbleweed. And more prairie huh? onion. All right, so we got prairie onion, thimbleweed, and a prairie onion over there. There's the goat's through. In the end, I put uh, both containers here. Those that already died back. This one's on its way out. That's where I put it. Should look lovely right there next to that rock. I am back here on the north end of the house of the property uh, back by the woods and I have planted some mintha canadensis mintha arvensis canadensis uh, and the native mint I got uh, sort of four had four containers left I'll put them in three groups one down here by the cute little pile of rocks Another group in here by the log and one more right in here by the tree. Okay. Okay, I have Verbena simplex and yellow. Oh, what is it called? Baptista? Baptisia? Tinctoria. Baptisia tinctoria. So it's yellow wild indigo. And verbena simplex. Okay, I've got two of the Baptisia in here and one over there. I'm just going to put them in the ground as is. The verbena I will split apart and put in various places along here. Okay, top growth. Not much. A lot of it has died back. Roots. Roots look great. So you can't even see. Whatever made those roots has died back. But be fine to plant right in that hole. One of the great things about winter sowing plants is that those plants build strong roots. It does make strong, healthy rooted plants. And we are going to be relying <laughs> on that root strength, <laughs> that root potential <laughs> um, to see if these come back and flourish next year, next season. So wish them luck.